here we are again, reading once again from the Seeker's Journal by Om Prakash Gilmore, and it is a spiritual journey that we can all take. Thanks for visiting our channel again. Please subscribe and hit the bell. Help to monetize us so we can make more important videos, not more fancy, but better. You can also visit our website to see what we are about and the things that we're doing in the world right now. That'll be in the link below. So we pick up where we left off, reading from journal entry number 29. Dreams, gods, goddesses, guides, and comforters. All of these things are connected together in the human being. And what is the human being? What is real and unreal? Suppose as if my gods tell me that it is all real. Suppose that everything that happened is real. An extension of the reality that we live in rather than an alternative to it. As I explored jumping dimensions, I am constantly being told and realizing that the reality that we speak of is not the foundational reality. It is but a part of a larger thing called creation, which is part of an even larger thing called mind of creator or consciousness. If this sense, what we experience in dreams, shamanic journeys and deep meditation, is not an escape from reality. They are entering into reality. Let me read this again because I totally messed up that line. In this sense, what we experience in dreams, shamanic journeys, and deep meditation is not an escape from reality. They are entering into reality. One need not have hopes and dreams of an escape from this world that he or she hungers for. One need not cry or mourn because they have peak spiritual experiences and then return to this reality which is dull in comparisons, just wishing they could really be where they were during their experiences because they really were where they were during those experiences. If one chooses to understand the world of the spiritual experience as fantasy, it is just as easy and truthful to understand that this too is fantasy. As soon as one lets go of the idea that the vehicle or the body is the self, one is free to roam the stars. One returns to the original self and all is possible. The body is not the self. The body is not the vessel for the self, only a minuscule part of the larger self. The self is too large to inhabit a body. The self downloads instructions just the way a remote control works on a model, plane, or car. The one who is working the remote control, however, isn't the car. Our minds and brains are like the remote control. Our sensors are like feelers that help us to steer the body. They are all like the camera that one can connect to a drone to see where it's going and to hear what is happening. But one is not the drone. The things we have created can't compare to the power of the body because the body is a living entity in itself that has made a covenant with us. To carry us through time and space. Part of the earth has risen up as a body in order to see itself and to be hands to work to heal itself. As the soul and mind, part of the eternal, has come into the body to exercise its creative power and energy in the world. To test itself fully and to work to heal the earth and to experience the humbling power of helplessness that prevents an all-powerful being from becoming hard-hearted, unfeeling, and demonic. We live our lives. This is a union of mind and body. 
the scientists who have no idea what they are talking about when it concerns the truth about life and reality never will because they're very narrow lens and measures of exclusivity will guarantee that they will never come to the truth. That is why it's good just to be. Don't be anything. Don't put on the hat or the uniform. Just be and live. Live life fully. This is the plan we had for ourselves when we entered into this world. And this was the plan of divinity when all of these realities were created. This is entry number 30. I have finally arrived at another timeline. It was another dimension that came as a realization. Many of our dreams, if not all of them, are visitations to other timelines and dimensions that quantum scientists and mystics have been talking about for many years. We have dreams in order to fill all the spaces that our souls exist in. That is why when we arrive in dreams, no one is surprised to see us. That's why we have always been there. And if you have done any advanced dream work where you actually communicate with characters in your dreams, they will give you a whole history of themselves, their communities, and even you and your interactions with them. The secret to crossing dimensions and timelines is a natural occurrence that takes place in dreams and altered states of mind all the time. When one arrives in these dreams consciously, it is as if you are giving a gift of linkage and personal growth to another version of the self. And you are also receiving information from another version of the self that makes you whole and it makes you complete. That is why dreams are so important, and that is why one can go mad and become ill if one doesn't sleep. Sleep is more than the body resting. It is the connection of the smaller self, one soul here on earth with the larger self, one soul and body spread across time and space. This, the dreaming, the sleeping, the connection, is a portal taking us into the oneness and the reality that exists beyond time and space. In other words, we are completely one with everybody and everything. Time and space, chronological time and space is one. We think of these dimensions, various worlds and various individuals as bubbles floating around in one medium. Truth is that they are not floating in the medium. They are the medium. When we begin to think beyond the dualistic Newtonian model and see the universe as an organic thing in an organic way, as a mandala instead of separate bubbles, we realize that we are all one thing circulating through an immovable center. We are in constant motion. And our dreams and sleep are our vehicles for reconnection with the center. Now, since I have realized this, my emphasis will be on getting more conscious awareness into my dreams and blurring the edges of this dream that we call reality with the others. In one dream, I was in a place where we were driving through a large estate. We came to a large European type house with a big courtyard. Seemed like a housing complex. We wove our way through looking for the exit. We got to it and pulled out. There were policemen going up and down the street. As we pulled down a back street, we saw many people wearing surgical masks. We slowed down as a group walked toward us. And a woman said, We are solo nails. As I awakened, I heard the words, solo nails, gentil, gentilly. Solo nails, gentilly, meaning the new original ones. 
or the new original family. In that dream, I felt that I was actually in a different dimension, mimicking the occurrences happening here right now for some reason. I still haven't figured out the ramifications. I think, in reality, that it means we are the same as we have always been from the beginning of time. We are the original souls. And that's all of us. Journal entry number 31. A little bit frustrating today. Nothing happened miraculous during my search last night. My spiritual journey was gone. I think it has really reached its peak. Many of the experiences I report in this journey have actually become normal now that I don't know what to report. I guess the main thing that is happening is all of my guides and their lineages are blending together into one line and person. They have also become more active in moving me from one place to the next in dreams and on shamanic journeys. It has always been that I would choose a place, I would chant, meditate, pray, then open a place in my heart and mind that I would proceed to. I would proceed to that space and wait. They would come and join me. After meeting in one place for many months or years, I would eventually choose another one. Now it seems they want to move me out of the familiar places and take me to very unfamiliar places where things I have never really seen exist. It is as if they are trying to stretch me by taking me out of my comfort zone. They also seem to be becoming more familiar as if some type of war has broken down. And they trust me more than before. I find this strange. I am wondering if I am just becoming more psychotic. But at the same time, I am realizing that I have been somewhat foolish in my belief in material science and their explanation of things they cannot measure physically. There was a person named Pythagoras on Greece who had a school. His theory was that mathematics was the basis of the universe and that you could define all reality in mathematical terms. It was a way of worshiping and understanding the gods. This ideology had been picked up by the physicists with the spiritual aspect and the idea of deity stripped away. Now the physicists, in other words, are practicing a form of religion minus the deity to tell us how the universe works and the nature of the universe. I think science is very good at telling what things do. I think it was created to do that. The problem comes when they try to tell us how and why. Sometimes they are correct. Sometimes they aren't. A lot of it is left up to guesswork. Or drawing on other findings long ago that really have not been challenged. This nullifies their suggestions many times because if they are correct sometimes and incorrect sometimes, then you can't tell when which is which. It's no better than faith in a religious belief or philosophical conclusion. I had been so undead and done. I have been so inundated with scientific thinking and the validity of it, and only it, that I had begun to disbelieve my own experiences. There is no telling how far I may have progressed on my path had I not been trapped in a narrow dualistic way of seeing the world. With that said, I intend to explore the experiences that I have been having without discounting them. Because a scientist, like the Catholic Church of old, has not placed the seal of approval on my experiences. And that is the end of the reading today. Let's look forward to another post in a few days. It's always good to be with you here. And we hope you're enjoying these journal readings I know they sound wild but do you know what life is wild it's not tame 
it's not in the little box that the scientists and theologians would like us to think it's in. Life is only predictable when one realizes that everything is moving, living, breathing, and changing because you see the only constant about the world and the universe is a fact that is not constant. It's good to be with you. Hit the bell, subscribe, and we'll be trying to build this channel so we can do more readings and more important, do more writing in the future. If you'd like to help us, you could purchase some of our books or you can make a donation on our webpage and get a free copy of our ebook there. You can find that by, yeah, it's going to our website and looking through, seeing what you like and what you don't. Have a great day. Namaste.